Thank you CI Games for providing me with a free copy of Lords of the Fallen for review. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date on the latest co-op games. Now in this review, I'm covering the co-op experience of Lords of the Fallen on the Xbox Series X. This review will be broken up into gameplay explained, co-op explained, then my thoughts slash important information, so feel free to skip around to get the information you need. When playing Lords of the Fallen, you will have one game mode, and that is the Souls-like story mode. Story-wise, a demon god is being resurrected, and it's your job to work your way through a linear world, defeating everyone in your way to make sure the demon god is not resurrected. Before getting started, you will choose from 10 classes. Each class offers their own equipment, and stat point distribution that each provide a certain playstyle. After choosing your class, you will be dropped into the world and have your standard Souls-like experience. Challenging enemies and bosses, replenishable healing items, a collected currency used to upgrade your character, new equipment acquired by finding it throughout the world or by defeating enemies, and a rest spot used to respawn enemies and allocate skill points. The core gameplay loop is working your way through the world up until you find a boss, you defeat them, and repeat. The main difference you'll find in this game, compared to other Souls-like games, is through the use of a lantern. This lantern is used to look or make the full jump into an alternate dimension. So for example, if you see a broken bridge, take your lantern out, and odds are that bridge is completed in the alternate world. Swap to the other dimension and cross the bridge. This concept is used to defeat enemies, solve puzzles, and get around the world. Now when it comes to co-op, with this being a Souls-like game, you have a lot to wrap your head around. The most important thing is that co-op allows two players to fully complete the game from start to finish online with crossplay support. Both players will stay connected if either the host or non-host player dies. There is no requirement to summon your co-op partner, you just simply invite them. You can match with a random player if needed. There is no in-game voice chat, but there is emotes used to help communicate. There is no friendly fire. You will be invaded by an enemy player randomly while in co-op. Crossplay co-op is reliant on all platforms being on the same update, so there can be some times where crossplay is not working. Now how the co-op system works is confusing, so I will break it down into host and non-host experiences. As the host, you will be the only one making story progress, but both players keep all character progress and loot. Most loot items can only be picked up by the host, but items can be dropped to be traded to your co-op partner. If you die as the host, this will result in the non-host player being defeated, and both of you will be sent back to the last rest area. If playing as the non-host player, you will only get half the amount of currency that is used to level up your character when defeating enemies. You cannot pick up most items. If you die, you can be revived by the host player at the expense of their replenishable healing items. You can only be a certain distance away from the host, otherwise you will be teleported to them. And that's all that this game has to offer. Now for my experience, I felt the co-op was really fun but it's currently held back by some odd design choices. Fighting and exploring with my co-op partner was very exciting and having picked our classes to work together, we were constantly communicating and that's all you can really hope for when playing a co-op game. Now that experience starts to fall off when my co-op partner has all these limitations and drawbacks of playing with me. So we end up having to play through every area twice so we both have the full experience, level up, and get all the loot we need. I recommend that's how you play this game, so if you're not okay doing that, you and your co-op partner will most likely not enjoy this game. I really did enjoy my experience when playing this game, but it could be so much better without all these odd design choices holding back the co-op. So with all that being said, unfortunately, I'd have to give the co-op experience of Lords of the Fallen 4 pepperonis out of 10. Lords of the Fallen offers a stunning experience, but much like most games in the same genre, it's held back by unnecessary co-op design choices. And that'll do it for this review. Comment below if you have any questions, and I will try to help.